Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and guess what? Today is not a good day to die. That's right, because I just reviewed the most insulting, shitty remakes that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I knew it was going to be bad from the start when they decided to greenlight this awesome movie and turn it into a piece of shit. Because I guess sometimes wires shouldn't be crossed. Yeah, I'm talking about the movie Flatliners. And as you already know, I reviewed the original Flatliners a year ago when I picked this up at Barnes & Noble for a very good price. And while the Blu-ray isn't the best, out of both worlds, but at least it was good enough for me to pick it up. It has no extras whatsoever. The sound is pretty so-so. The transfer is what it is. But we now have a new transfer from Mill Creek that had a digital remaster picture and some 5.1 audio sound, so the movie looks even better than ever. However, it could have been a whole lot better if they added more extras and maybe they would have thought about having a 4K remaster instead. But it's the best they can ever do. And they put it in a steel book that looks really nice. I still love this movie to this day. No matter what. It definitely has a great cast right here. You got Kiefer Sullivan, Julia Roberts, Kevin Bacon, William Baldwin, and Oliver Platt all together in this fine cover art that has visually stunning effects. A great idea for a concept. I mean, having all medical students actually trying out an experiment about what was it like if you were in the afterlife once you die. Great idea. In this remake, they just took this concept and threw it in the trash by hiring great actors like Ellen Page and Diego Luna. Unbelievable. I knew this movie was going to be bad, but I never thought it was going to be a whole lot worse. And it's pretty sad to see one of the most talented actresses from Canada who started out fresh with movies like Hard Candy, Juno, Whip It, and Inception, as well as X-Men, The Last Stand, which I know wasn't the greatest sequel ever made, but at least she was promising as Kitty Pride, And she was also in the movie X-Men Days of the Future Pass and this was at the time when she just came out of the closet gave an important speech and now she's officially a lesbian nothing wrong with that <laughs> but I haven't seen her in a movie for a while I know she had done maybe a few independent films I just never thought I would see Ellen Page suffer from this. You know, having to see her actually going around using the experiment and actually be able to do what she couldn't even have done for a long time. Just bake bread, run 12 miles, and actually learn how to play the piano. Along with her friends, they're all medical students. <laughs> and the fact that he helped her friends, all drunk as hell, dancing around while trashing her living room wall that went, in, that went inside into her bedroom. There you go. And they're just going around, you know, having fun, doing all this other stuff. I just, and the fact that we get all the hallucinations and the jump scares and all this other stupid crap 
a lot of vibrant uh, psychedelic quality that they went into the movie. It, it truly insulted me. It insulted my intelligence. And I can't believe this movie actually made profit at the box office. But I'm pretty certain it would have flopped. But I don't know. I just couldn't believe that they got a lot of talented involved in this mess. And frankly, I definitely blame Sony for this. I blame Sony for greenlighting this, that they shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Just like how they greenlighted the Total Recall remake, Robocop remake with the help of MGM, as well as all the other stuff that didn't need to be there. I mean, yeah, a lot of studios are doing the same fucking thing. They're always remaking classics. Modern day classics from the 80s and 90s. Or any other year. Or decade. I'm just tired of this. I really am. It's just sad that they had to took a shit on this movie. One of my favorite movies. Of 1990. Along with all the other movies that I've seen. It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Well. Let's get started. Before I want to flatlining up my ass and die. It stars Ellen Page. From Hard Candy. Juno. Whippid. Exception. And all these other good movies that she's been in. And stuck in this fucking mess. Diego Luna, been best known for that TV show that he did in Spanish called Il Pomeo Mayo, which means Grand Prize Jackpot. That's a TV series, uh, a Spanish soap opera. But he also had been in films like E2 Mama Type Blin, as well as Frida, uh, even the sequel to Dirty Dancing, which, eh. He was a, he was fine at least. He was also in the movie The Terminal, and he was last seen in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Yeah. Nina DeRay, who was in the TV series The Vampire Diaries on CW, uh, but she was also in the movie The Purse of Being a Wallflower as well as Let's Be Cops, uh, that lame comedy, and Triple X, uh, Return of Zayner Cage. Yeah, that's where we last saw her. James Norton, who's been best known for playing the Jenny's boyfriend in An Education, the movie with, uh, yeah, the film with uh, Carrie Mulligan that came out in 2009. Came a long way from that film. Kirstie Clemlings, who's been in the other stuff like uh, Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, which I haven't seen yet. Um, that's what I heard. Kiefer Sullivan, of course, was also in the original Flatliners. This time he plays a different role. And he's been in other stuff, as we all know, of course, 24, and many other films. <laughs> uh, Bo Murchoff, Madison uh, Bridges, Miguel Anthony, Jenny Raven, and bikini model Charlotte McKinney. That's right. It's written by Ben Ripley, who's been best known for writing a great movie with Jake Gyllenhaal called Source Code. Yeah, that was a great movie, and I couldn't believe he wrote this. And it's directed by a Danish director who gave us The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the original. They gave uh, Nomi Rapace her start. Niels Arden Opre. Yeah, hard to believe. This shitty remake begins when we meet a medical student named Courtney, who's played by Ellen Page. 
is completely obsessed with the idea of the afterlife, trying to find out what really happens there. Mostly because she already had a trauma experience you know, during a car accident with her young sister. When she wasn't paying attention to the road, she was looking at her cell phone until where she almost uh, hit a truck, but suddenly um, crashes into the bridge and the car suddenly flips over into the river. She's the only one that survived the event except for her younger sister, and she died. So. Basically, she invites her fellow students, Jamie, who's played by James Norton, along with Sophia, that's played by Kirsty Clemmings, to join her in her experiment that she's about to do. That's inside an underground hospital room, which is basically like any other normal hospital as we see. We don't see that gothic look to it anymore. It's really a shame. I really missed that in the original movie. So she's basically playing the Kiefer Sullivan role as we know it. <laughs> there you go. Well inside she used the fabrication to stop her heart for 60 seconds while recording her brain with her laptop and then they try to revive her while she wants up in a trance where she begins to see what the afterlife happens yeah, during a flat line. That's where we get to see like close-ups of, of which it looked like they might have just used uh, a joy to actually <laughs> do all these zoom outs from the from the GoPro camera. Yeah, I had the feeling that's what they did, and they probably used all the special effects that they had to create just to do all these shots, where we basically see um, an operation. Uh, that's inside uh, the person's body where you see all the insides here that they're experiencing and then you see all this other stuff all the way up until it just moves all the way straight to the campus and all the way straight into the, the church the bridges and the city and then suddenly she experienced something that happens on the bridge. How it looks so beautiful and magical. All <laughs> psychedelic in a way. And then when they finally revived her, she's now woken up. She begins to experience exactly what's, ex what's happening in the afterlife. And that's what causes her to become more addicted that suddenly she became more smarter she even know how to break bread and even play the piano and yes she can even run or rock for 12 miles <laughs> there you go and because of that Jamie decided to to do the same because he's such a, a fucking a jock in this movie he wants to experience what was it like in the afterlife himself and basically he just rides around in a motorcycle having an awesome time of his life while he was with uh, his girlfriend and she's played by Charlotte McKinney so they're riding around until suddenly she disappears so then Jamie starts seeing visions but doesn't tell anyone about that and then soon Marlo was played by Nina Debray, decided to join in, and then soon Sophia joins, and so they all begin to see a lot of hallucinations that's happening around, with too many jump scares here and there, and then we begin to see what was happening during the afterlife. And of course, um, all the medical students are being taught by a doctor named Dr. Barry Wolferson, who's played by Kiefer Sullivan. Yeah, he's walking around in a cane, uh, has uh, black thick glasses, trying to look like a nerd. He has white hair, goes around slamming his cane on the table just to get the attention. 
here and there. So, Ray thought it was a bad idea that this whole thing can cause a big problem, that they can get expelled from medical school. So they're just going around having fun with this whole experiment. As I just mentioned it before, decided to have a couple drinks and then they're dancing around. They're, they're trashing the they're trashing the Courtney's wall. And then they're just going outside because it's it was hailing. Yeah, it, it just rained filled with hail. And they're just going around outside just having fun until something bad starts to happen. So Courtney's experience was suddenly she spots uh, her dead sister just coming around into her room and yes I'm going to spoil the surprise for you she actually dies when her young sister started following her all around s scaring her to death and then suddenly when Courtney just went outside trying to escape from her apartment, she fell out of the ledge and died. So now there's only four students left, and now they're trying to experience uh, what's happening. Uh, Jamie's experience was when he was inside his boat, and then he's, he began to find out that there was a crying baby that's hidden inside the the ropes and then the he began to spot it, his girlfriend and it just keeps following him all the way around Marlo's experience though was that she started out as a uh, a wonderful student and and very uh, athletic and yeah because she also swims you know, she's a swimming championship. She's also um, an Extrian rider when she was a little girl. She also plays the cello, too. But then she begins to experience that she once murdered someone. But it was an accident. And it was her patient that was trying to save his life, but suddenly dies, and then... It almost seemed like this was going to be a revenge for her. Oh, yeah. And of course, uh, Sophia experience was... She actually made fun of a girl at high school. Because she actually posted a picture of her naked. And they started making fun of her completely. And that's what leads to that. So what they had to do was, just like in the original movie, they had to go out, they try to meet them somewhere so that way they can apologize for what they did. Because we did learn that Jamie actually got her girlfriend pregnant and Sophia just made fun of her. So apologizes. Wow. <laughs> Marlo, on the other hand, is just can't forget uh, what just happened with the with the patient and the fact that the patient was about to uh, strangle her while she was in the car yeah by putting the the bag over her head while she was driving and you know, crashes uh, into a restaurant and then she was about to go all the way down to the underground hospital room where she's about to uh, go back to that experiment. Um, so they so she can be flatlined and that way she can go back to the way she was. So that way they can forgive them for what they did. Uh, so on and so forth. Oh Jesus. Uh, I, I'm sorry. This movie just pisses me off so much that I just can't believe it. I, I just fucking can't believe this film. It's a waste of time. It's a huge mess. Uh, it, it The way they marketed this movie just feels like a, a bad Apple ad. 
and the cast just looked like they've been masqueraded like like they were underwear models you know, posing for this mess and I, I never thought I would see Ellen Page this bad in the film and I just couldn't believe it I mean and the fact that she's the first one to go that now we're stuck with all the cast just you know running around trying to uh, find a way to stop it from all these uh, hallucinations that they've been getting and it's just a fucking waste of time there's there's a lot of stupid scenes in this movie that I just never forget I mean yes they even they even got into bigger trouble by actually uh, escaping the you know once the guards came around they had a car chase scene once they escape and they bought to go all the way straight to a party uh, this just goes on and on and on I, I, I'm just gonna say this man I really wish I was flatlined and they just pulled the plug on me so that way I would never want to see this fucking movie again and I'd rather be in an afterlife world or at least I can actually experience something before and stay there forgive myself for watching this mess it's fucking boring it insulted my intelligence and and it's just really sad to see such wasted talent getting involved and I just can't believe it how I wasted nearly two hours of my life that I will never get back it was only an hour and fifty minutes and I just can't believe this got released in theaters and they should have pulled the plug before it was into production. <sighs> what a fucking mess. I just can't believe it. Acting was pretty bad in this film. No doubt about it. I mean, this is a great cast right here that they got. And they all suck. Completely. Uh, the only um, the only good scenes I, I had to say was Kiefer Sullivan's character, and, and he's only there for just um, scene after scene. But that that's pretty much it. And of course, maybe Ellen Page uh, for her appearance and, and the, the way she's just playing her character. Uh, I don't know, man. It, you know what? Forget this, man. Fuck this movie. This movie should be flatlined completely. Just stick to the 1990 film. It's so much better. You'd just be better off watching that movie because, let's face it, it's not a good day to die. But it's a good day to fucking trash it completely. So, fuck the remake and stick to the 1990 film because you'll definitely appreciate that film more because that film is more visually stunning than this piece of shit. End of story. And what was even stupid about this is that they even lied to people saying that this was not a sequel. Because this movie was supposed to take place after the 1990 film. That wasn't the case when they said it was a remake instead. Sony, you fucked up. Really big time. I just can't believe that you're one of the biggest corporations of all time in Japan. And the fact that you own the studio, Columbia Pictures, for a very long time, ever since 1989. And you had to fuck up with your own stupid level. I mean, this is the worst thing that you ever done since you hired a fake movie critic to criticize a lot of those quote whores on every single movie that's released from the studio. See? That's your biggest fuck up right there. And that sucks because I love Sony. I was lucky enough to get all their products. 
So, take it as it may. Okay, you do make some good movies and make a lot of great profit. But, God damn it, man. You always do stoop so low by taking all the classics and butchering them. And then come up with a lot of stupid movies these days to earn your own fucking will. And, and that, that really explains why all the movies that are supposed to come out on Blu-ray wants up being sold to other companies like Twilight Time, Mill Creek, but that's it. It's pretty much those companies. This is why you need to get your act together, Sony, and start releasing all your fucking titles. Instead of making garbage like this. Stop remaking them. Just give us a special edition to all these modern day classics. For Christ's sake. Put them on Blu-ray. 4K remastered Ultra HD. What the hell, man? I can't believe Sony had to fucking mess this shit up already. Out of all people. I guess maybe because they were so desperate. Because they have to make so many bad movies nowadays. With Emoji Movie coming around. Oh, God. Yeah, I can't believe they have to fuck this shit up. You know, after they canceled Popeye. Or, or they tried to, to find a way to release that. But I don't know, man. <sighs> yeah. Avoid this movie for all eternity. And yes, it's going to be on my worst list. <laughs> I'm already coming up with it already, as we know it. So this is going to stay there. So anyway, I give this shitty Flatliners zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye.